Well, hey there, church. Thank you for joining us as we take a look at some scripture together this Wednesday. And last week we spent some time in Colossians chapter 3, and this week I thought we would just move a little forward into Colossians chapter 4, and starting at verse 2 and go to verse 6. And just a little passage there, just a little blip for us to think about and to talk about and to see what what God is saying to us through this little bit of scripture. And so we'll just pick up right there at verse 2. It says this, devote yourselves to prayer. Stay alert in it with thanksgiving. We think about that. I mean, just pausing there, that first instruction in verse 2, devote ourselves to prayer. Stay alert in it with thanksgiving. Uh, that we should be constantly seeking out prayer. Well, why is that important? Well, that's how we communicate with God. You know, the, the moments we spend in prayer are moments in communication. And so we have to think about what does it mean to pray? Well, what does it mean to pray? Well, it, to speak our heart unto God, speak our desires, our fears, our requests, and then listening, waiting on that response, spending time quietly listening and waiting on an answer. Stay alert in it with thanksgiving. Being thankful that we even have the opportunity to do it. That God avails, that God offers himself, that God has himself available to us to even hear our prayers. Not only available to us, but he desires to hear our prayers. So then we see in verse 3, At the same time, pray also for us that God may open a door to us for the message to speak the mystery of the Messiah for which I am in prison. So Paul, in prison here, asking for them to pray for him, that God would open a door, that, that a door would be open, that he would be able to share the gospel in the prison, that he would be able to share Jesus with those that are imprisoning him. Man, that's a powerful, powerful faith. To pray for those who are persecuting him, but not only that, but to pray that God would open their hearts to the gospel where it would be so easy in his humanity to pray for their punishment or to pray vengeance upon them. No, what's he praying for? He's praying for their salvation. What does that say to me? Well, for those that I don't agree with, for those that I may not like humanistically, I'm going to pray for their salvation. For those people in leadership in Washington, and it's been my prayer for a long time, I pray that those who don't know Jesus come to know Jesus. That they would give their lives to him. That they would become Christ followers. Because if we want to see true change, that's what we've got to do. We've got to pray that these people would accept and embrace the message of Jesus Christ. Become more like him and less like the world. So as we pray for our leaders, that's what we need to pray, church. We need to pray that if they don't know who Jesus is, if they haven't accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, that they would do that. That they would come to know Jesus as Lord and they would begin to live their lives as he would ask them to, as he would call them to be, they'd quit seeking the world. Then in verse 4, so that I may reveal, reveal it as I am required to speak. He's just praying exactly that he would be able to share the gospel with those, in, those persecuting him. Verse 5, walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the most of the time. Think about that. Walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the most of the time. To me, what that says is, is I can't expect people who aren't raised in church to act like church folk. can't expect somebody who hasn't been involved with, with ministry like I have to understand the ins and outs of it. And it's not fair for me to assume that they would know those things. I have to come to them on their level. That's something I try to do if, if you ever come and, and visit our church. I want to talk to you about what your interests are. What do you like? What are your what are you into? Are you, are, do you watch sports? Do you play sports? Are you a fisherman? Are you a hunter? Uh, are you like me? Are you a 36-year-old nerd? You know, are you into Legos? If I turn this camera uh, to where you could see past those books behind me, you would see my Legos. And above it, if you look hard enough, you're probably pretty sure those are two lava lamps and a plasma ball. And you're right. I'm a nerd. I fully admit it. Uh, but I want to know what you're into when you come. I want to get to know you as a person. And then as we get to know each other, I will learn more about where you are at inside of your relationship with Christ. And I don't expect you to, to have the same knowledge that I do, nor would that be very fun. I don't have it all. I don't know everything. I'm constantly trying to figure this thing out. 
So then in verse 6, your speech should always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you should answer each person. Be careful how we speak to people, church. Be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you should answer each person. Be prepared to give people an answer, but also be prepared to do it in a loving way. Scripture tells us that we should offer a loving rebuke, that anything we do should be bathed in love. Not that we want to show someone how wicked and evil they are, but we just want to show them how gracious and loving God is, and that we are just as guilty as them. And without the grace given to any of us by Jesus, we're in just as much trouble. And so as I think about what's going on right now, is obviously with everything in the world, uh, and that's been a constant kind of theme, is, is what do we do as Christ followers with everything going on in the world? I think Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 6 sort of give us a great idea of what to do. Prayer. Be praying, church. Stay alert in it with thanksgiving. Be thankful for the opportunity to pray. Be praying for those leaders. Be praying for those that are going to be put in positions of power in our government. Be praying that they would come to know Jesus. They haven't accepted him as Lord and Savior. Be praying that you would have the opportunity to share the gospel. Walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the most of our time. There's a lot of mixed emotions in the world right now, church. It should not be the place of us as Christ followers to continue to mix up those emotions. We should be the people bringing peace and love and understanding. We think about our speech being gracious and seasoned with salt. We can't worry about what everybody else is saying and doing, church. The only people we can fix are the people we see in the mirror every morning. Casting Crowns has a great song right now, and in the chorus of that song says that it starts right here, starts right now. It's got to start right here. It's got to start right now. That's how it's going to work for us, church. It's got to start with you. It's got to start with me. It's got to start with us as individuals doing the things that we know we're supposed to do as Christ followers, doing them in the community and with those around us. And it's got to start now. We can't wait till next week. We can't wait till next month. We can't wait till the next 20 minutes. We've got to be doing the work now, church. Tomorrow will eventually come. Eventually, there'll come a time when Jesus descends out of the clouds and will think in our minds, I didn't do enough. I didn't work hard enough. But what would we do if we knew he was coming in the next 20 minutes? I bet we'd get after it. So church, that's my challenge to myself and to you. We would devote ourselves to prayer and thanksgiving. We would devote ourselves to sharing the gospel, even with those we may not agree with on everything. That we would be wise in the time we spend with those who don't know who Jesus is. And that our speech would be gracious and seasoned in such a way that we would be sharing the gospel with those at all times. With that in mind, church, let us pray. God, we just thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity to spend some time studying your word. God, we thank you that you are still on the throne, that you are still gracious, you are still good, you are still all-knowing. God, I pray that we would take these things to heart, that we would bring everything to you with prayer and thanksgiving, that we would share the gospel with those around us, that we would be wise in our words. God, we pray for leaders. We pray for those who are going to come into positions of leadership. God, we just pray you would give them uh, wisdom. God, if they don't know who you are, I pray that they would come to know you, that they would seek to, to live as you would call all to live. That they would seek to be Christ followers first. God, we know the only way that, that, that that's the only way real change is coming. The only way real change happens in a country is if you get a hold of the leadership. So God, I pray that those that are in leadership that don't know you would come to know you, that they would seek to be more like you less like the world. 
God, we thank you for the gifts you give us. We thank you for the blessings you bestow upon us, even though we don't deserve them. We thank you for the greatest gift and blessing you bestowed upon us, which was the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, dying for our sins. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Well, church, I want to thank you for joining with us as we just spent a, a little bit of time in Colossians chapter 4. Uh, remember, if you're in the Lytle or San Antonio area, we would love to have you join us in person. If you have any questions or thoughts or you need anything from us, please feel free to reach out on these YouTube videos. You can uh, message us on our church Facebook page or you can email me directly at sean.trinitybc at gmail.com. As always, we love you. There is nothing you can do about that. And until we see you in person, stay safe.